What is happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So today we made it all the way up here to Wisconsin. We're at Ryan's Diesel Performance and Kodiak Trucks. We're gonna be doing something really cool for you guys today. We're gonna to be doing some driveline work. Mark with Kodiak Truck is gonna be hooking us up. We're gonna be doing some custom transfer case work and we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into with it. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Truckmaster. Hey, can I get your autograph? Like, this is a for real YouTuber. Like, for reals, guys. Hey, hang on, hang on. I, uh, I don't have a pen. Oh, shit. All right. We'll get one later. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll give you a hug. So in this industry, we all make mistakes here and there, and I'll be the first one to admit that I definitely do the same. Over the last um, month or so, we had the cab off, I had heads off, about every single nut and bolt, and on this instance, come to find out that I kind of missed something. Yeah. The uh, the trans mounts that goes on the rear mount here, we can have a look up on under it. Oh, See if we can get it here. Okay. Right up there, those two little mounts that go through the trans mount. Guess some uh, some dummy forgot to put the actual nuts back in the mount there. So I've been running around with uh, trans mount, <laughs> kind of just flopping in the wind. It's a good thing I haven't been beating on it all that hard. Well, I guess we live and learn. We'll get some new nuts. Basically, this is just plug for your encoder motor for your shifting and uh, your speed sensor in the tail. That's Pretty basically it. And then, of course, you know, like all your little retaining clips and whatnot. Yep, your clips hold your harness that run around to the back here. Yeah, and, it's pretty uh, straightforward. One of the things I always look for when getting one of these cases out is always check the front input. You don't want to see excessive movement there. We've had some that come back as coarse, and we'll show you some of them later. We got them under the bench that are just blasted. If this input can move also, it'll end up taking out the range fork in the front of the case, and you can have a symptom where, the, where it acts like it kicks into neutral, which is basically what it's doing. Um, we can show you them parts here in just a little bit. We'll grab some and, and show that to you, but this thing's nice and tight, yet, looks good, um, but the truck only has 100,000 miles on, so we're in good shape with this thing. So we'll do all our upgrades. We're gonna knock this down. We're gonna get a few of these bearings out of here. The front output bearing, I don't like the idea. From the factory, they got a plastic cage holding all the balls separated in there. We always use a metal cage bearing on those. When you're locked in four wheel drive, if your truck pulling, you're pounding on the thing, you get a lot of tire shake or anything going down the track. I don't like the idea of plastic in a bearing. So we'll put metal cage bearings in there and uh, we'll get this thing all tuned up. this thing apart we ended up finding out where did that clip go the clip here for the retaining ring on it is actually already got a snapped end to it we get some zoomage on that one it's already broken off as compared to that end so only with a hundred thousand miles on this one at pretty light use and obviously a clean inner case you're still gonna have broken crap so as you can see this guy kind of knows what he's doing he might be able to do it in his sleep three or four times. Do you ever sleep, Build? I do. <laughs> it's a sin when you see transfer cases in your sleep. <laughs> so we're gonna go over the internals here and we'll see what kind of we've got working with. 
All right, so Mark's got this thing all ripped apart in about 437 pieces, and we did it like lickety split like. So you've been doing this for quite a while. Now let's go over individually these parts. What kind of failure points are we looking at on the transfer case for the LBZ? Sure, for any of them, what we want to do as soon as we get it apart is we check, check planetary gears. Each gear on here, we check for any movement. We also check to make sure the plastic thrusts found in here are not broken. Um, that can be another issue. Um, we're definitely going to knock our pocket bearing out of the input gear, get that out, always replace that. We've had a few that if you chance it and say, well, the bearing looks good, I'm going to run it, they'll get a hairline crack in here and you won't see it. And that's basically a freeze plug built right into the bearing. What will end up happening is your trans will overfill the case and you'll take it in and they'll replace the input seal. And they didn't catch the fact that these bearings crack. Very common on the Magna cases, seven and a half and newer. They'll break their snap ring groove on the rear main shaft. The main shaft will travel forward and it'll literally bust this pocket right out of the front, but it'll hang in there and nobody will see it and you can't see it in and around the spline when you look through the front of it. So it is a common problem. Um, and then basically we're just going to go through and look at all, everything else. 03 and up style cases have replaceable pads. The 0102s had an integrated pad where it was injection molded on it, much like the uh, mode fork is. Um, the rest of the internals in this case are gorgeous. Everything's beautiful in here. All the forks are in good shape, all the internal pieces. We always check the uh, range hub to the back of the input gear for spline wear. Also check it in the back of the planetary when you're in low range. Everything is spec on. Um, now when you were talking about the differences in holding together the bearings with the plastic retainer for the front output, where was that one located at? That's located in the front case half, which this is your front output shaft that comes out the front of the case and that bearing's lo located right on here. And we will dig that bearing back out so you guys can see exactly what we're talking about. Here's the bearing that goes in there and all the, the cages that hold all these balls separate are all plastic. We're going to put a metal caged bearing in there. That's kind of crazy. I didn't know that these had retainers inside them that were just plastic. When you're talking about as much wear and tear as these things get, that we're doing plastic insertions into these bearings, that's, that's just nuts to me. So now as far as the pump goes here in the rear, what kind of upgrades are we looking at on uh, being able to beef up this case in the pump? Sure, what we can option is we do use the merchant case half in the back. If somebody would want that, we can upgrade to it. Um, when we go to the aluminum case half, we've never had a problem with the aluminum pump on the aluminum housing. The two metals are not going to eat themselves up. But it's a cool deal to throw in there and you say you got it and it's a good piece and it's a very good design. The other thing we'll check out too is the slider clutch, which is this piece, which basically engages your four-wheel drive on the, on the hub for the front output. We'll always check these for wear because when that snap ring groove in the back wears, this thing can move in and out and it'll dance on the teeth on the front drive sprocket here and they can collide and cause wear. We'll look at that very closely also. The other thing we'll do is if we have a used chain, we don't necessarily always replace the chains. We have a way of checking the slack in the chain against a new one. If it's within spec, we'll run it. Those chains take an immense amount of power. Normally the only time you see chain failure is when somebody's running out of oil for a long, long period of time, which we can show you on a couple cases, cores that came back. So that's some pretty interesting stuff. And there's more that goes on to this than I originally had thought about it. And when you guys are looking into transfer case uh, rebuilds, or if you guys are kind of trying to think about it, doing it on your own, think about everything that Mark went through today and realize that there's a lot more that goes on within this case than even I thought. You know, doing that whole engine and build that we've done before, that was nothing compared to the little intricacies and everything that's inside of these transfer cases. It's kind of insane. So dealing with Mark here at Kodiak Truck and Driveline is gonna be one of the best things that you guys can do. I will be sure to leave a link down in the description below. And for the cost that these transfer cases, the rebuilds, and you also sell full ones already done, right? Correct, we have reman units on the shelf ready to go. We can, on assembly, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the rear case halves and the nickel coated updated yoke and, and all the goodies that you can do and uh, all the things you should do. Um, but yeah, there is definitely more than just putting a case saver plate or that type of thing in the back. There's other upgrades and things you should look at really. Not, if your case has got 150,000 miles on it, you should knock it down and look at more than just say, I'm gonna put a back case half on and a plate in it or 
or whatever method you're going to use to prevent the pump rub. Exactly. Uh, Once we're talking about the bulletproof nature of what these cases need to be able to handle, especially when you're getting up into the six, 700 horsepower range, over a thousand foot pounds of torque, that's where you guys are going to need to pretty much bulletproof this. And Mark's going to be the one to be able to do that one for you. Again, I will leave the link down below to get a hold of him and the phone number for the shop here in Wisconsin. He's able to handle any needs you guys have give him a call anytime and he's able to answer any questions you might have as well. So when Mark was talking about some transfer cases that had been through the war, this one right here would be the version of, oh, I forgot to put oil in it or we ran it for a little while low on oil. No, that's not just a little while, you done toasted it. So be good, check your oil regularly and you know, it'd probably be a good idea to change it out every once in a while too. So as you guys seen on some previous videos, here's our factory main shaft setup. Metal on metal, we got an oil groove cut in it, but it's still metal on metal, a lot of friction. Our deal, we CNC machine it. This is plus or minus a half a thou. The machining quality is fantastic. Um, second, to, second to none. What we end up with is a, a machine down shaft. We actually run three bearings, not two. This was an early design. And we basically take all the friction off of it. You compare the two, it's night and day. I can spin this as hard as I want. I spin this one as hard as I can, it'll go forever. I, this benefits you in two wheel drive because all your miles going down the highway, you're spinning through from the input gear to the output shaft center on center, takes all the friction and wear out of it. Some guys claim they pick up fuel economy. I don't want to advertise fuel economy, but we've done this for years and it's just a great setup with zero failure. Now that's what I'm talking about. This, this setup right here, talking about uh, something that's gonna take you know, all the questions out of the game and take all those extra, you know, failure points out of the transfer case. Are there any other normal failure points to the actual transfer cases, say in my truck right here as it sits? Absolutely, that rear snap ring groove in the rear of the case, when that fails, allows the main shaft to walk forward and back and it simply will end up taking out the, uh, the mode fork in the back, which we can actually show you an example of. Some people too made comments, they were concerned that we machine this down so far that we weaken the shaft. Bottom line is if you're gonna break this shaft anywhere through here, truck pulling, hole shot and boosted four wheel drive launches, you're gonna break it at this snap ring groove in the back. That's exactly where all of them will break. So up in the middle of this case, we have plenty of support between the backside of the input, the bearing here, there's plenty of beef in there. It's not gonna be a problem. All right, so now when we're moving back and forth, this is gonna be our old transfer case shaft. Let's see if we can get a little bit of focus into it. And the machining process is actually really, really easy, guys. It's as easy as just snapping your finger. Yep, that simple. And we go from shitty original shaft to look at that fancy stuff. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about the uh, machine surface for the new roller bearings. Okay, here's our stock drive hub. And here's our hub now with the uh, engagement teeth on it already and our three bearings in it. So with this original one, the bearing setup that they were using from factory, how is that differing from the new style? There absolutely was no bearing. It was strictly metal on metal. Metal on metal. So now here's our hub assembly. It's gonna go down on, and there we are. We lost all our friction, made it more efficient. More efficient, way, way better, guys. That's the way that they're doing these transfer cases the right way. All right, Mark, so we're gonna go through the pumps here and tell us the difference between the stock one, and this is, I'd say, one of the merchant pumps, ones? Yep. Okay. Exactly, this is the stock pump, which we feel works. We've had no problems with it in the, uh, with the aluminum rear, it doesn't pump rub again. We also offer this as an option. We can put the merchant case half on, which is a very, very good piece. And you know you got a total bulletproof set on. Um, so we do offer that also as another option. Cool. So we're gonna go ahead and get this case together and get this thing back in the truck. <laughs> Look at that.
get this back in, we'll, we'll get the brace back on it. Braces are excellent if you make any horsepower at all. Um, if you would have a U-joint fail, that brace will definitely help you from busting the backside of your Ellison off. We've seen a ton of failure in that area. So by having the brace in there, you'll take all the rotational load out between the trans and transfer case because the brace is now going to anchor it down up top. Um, they work great. Um, highly recommend it. Um, we've seen plenty just in the last probably five, six years of trucks coming through the shop that didn't have that on. They lost a U-joint and they go from you know, a $35 U-joint, a little bit of labor to the back half of a busted Allison that's coming out of a truck. And that's going to be one expensive bit. That is uh, $1,200, $1,500 to do a back housing and labor and everything else and pull the case out and get it all back together. Not going to lie, Mark, this transfer case is a gorgeous piece of machinery right here. What we've seen put together here, that is something that is top-notch, best in the industry. I'm going to recommend this one absolutely for anyone who's looking to get some uh, driveline upgrades. Mark entering beast mode here. What, what, what was the saying that you said? I'm old, not broken. I'm old, not dead. I'm old, not dead. Not only can you rebuild the transfer case faster than anybody in the business, he's still slinging them up there too. Now Mark, one of the other questions that I know people have asked in the past and will ask continuously, the transfer case is here. Realistically, power that they're able to handle. Power they're able to handle is what most guys will ever be able to make. Because obviously, if you get over 700 horse, you got to build a motor. Um, on this particular deal, we can easily throw 1,000 horsepower at this case with no issues. Um, if you were above 1,000 horsepower, it wasn't a daily driver, it wasn't a street-driven truck, we might consider not putting the CNC main shaft in because you're not going to have the wear, you're not going to put the miles on it, just to totally in increase the strength in it. Not that we, again, that we weakened it by doing that, but going to the fact of this is more designed for daily drivers, drivers that are, you know, 1,000 horsepower or less. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, on, if we did something that was 1,500 horsepower, we wouldn't put the rollerized main shaft in it because that's not going to be a daily driven truck. Still, with this amount of horsepower and everything and the efficiency that we're able to, you know, now say that we're going to have to the entire drive line. It's just an overall great build and something that is gonna give you guys the power, the strength, and the efficiency and driveline efficiency. That's an awesome build all the way around. So as you guys can see, Mark with Kodiak Driveline here is the best in the business that you guys can possibly get. And this transfer case is gonna be something awesome. I'm looking forward to be able to test this thing out properly. We've got the dyno day coming tomorrow with the big show. We're gonna be throwing this thing on there and then I've got the long drive back home. This thing's gonna be more efficient and it's just, in all words, peace of mind more than anything. Being able to have that heavy duty, amazing piece of machinery under the truck that's gonna have a good warranty and it's just not gonna break on me. Nothing that I'm gonna to put to this thing is ever gonna make it break. So I appreciate Mark being able to show us this awesome stuff that he's able to do. Again, I will leave all the information down below in the description where you guys can get a hold of him, the links to the transfer cases. He's able to do anything and everything along with in the driveline transfer cases for Fords, Dodges as well. Big into that one, he's, he's just a great guy to get a hold of. And if you guys have any questions, again, he's able to answer any of those for you. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure you go check out Truck Master's channel as well. He's got some really great information that we're going to be kind of tossing back and forth from this next two days here spent with Ryan's Performance Diesel and Kodiak Trucks here in North Prairie, Wisconsin. Appreciate you guys tuning in today. Thanks, and as always, you guys stay awesome. <laughs>